And so moving on to the next piece, India's battery supply chain, this is where India, in terms of the uh, raw materials lottery for batteries, uh, sort of got the short end of the stick and has like nothing, uh, you know, but I've been, I recently did an episode and talking about this whole thing of like, well, can we get new materials and batteries that are easier to come across, you know, all that stuff is in the future. But up until this point, a big friction and sort of maybe delay on the Indian EV economy has been this lack of access to the raw materials needed. Um, and, and they would have to import all those. And so, yeah. Yeah. What we can see here on slide 17 is, I mean, China is everywhere on this page, except for the nickel raw materials piece. But China dominates graphite supply, lithium supply, cobalt supply. India is not on this page at all. That is highly concerning. Because then the question is, where will they get these materials? They're going to have to import all these materials. So even if the battery cells are being manufactured in India, even if the, the vehicles are being manufactured in India, it's still a heavily import reliant business. And this is no different than the import reliance that India has had for oil since its independence over 70 years ago. And so one solution that has been put forward both by the government in India, but also by companies. And at this point, I really want to thank my friends at Atero Recycling, who are a recycling company based in India, for educating me on how the recycling market in India works, is due to the absence of there being primary materials mining happening in India, but the fact that there's such a large market for cell phones, for two wheelers, for cell phone towers that have lithium ion batteries, you can essentially create an urban mine through the recycling of materials. Wow, this is such a cool concept. And it almost the more and more I've been thinking about this of like, you know, did Elon Musk watch our previous episode about supply chains and the lithium and, and all that kind of stuff? Or is he thinking about it as like a one off expense? Like once we get enough materials for 5 million cars and they're in India and then we can recycle it and maybe get enough raw materials to build three or four million cars like that mine was like not like a perpetual expense and supply that's needed. It was like a one time upfront investment to get all the stuff out of the ground and then we can recycle it or at least, you know, recycle a good enough amount to actually start to be that new supply chain. I guess that's the sort of concept of this urban mine theory. Um, and that's like, you know, we've seen J.B. Straubel go into uh, recycling with redwood materials. And I think it's really interesting to see what you just said, not just battery materials recycling, but you know, how did JB and Elon even get the start their idea for Tesla? They were putting laptop batteries together and cell phones. So isn't there a ton of laptop and cell phone batteries that also need to be recycling that are also using a similar lithium ion technology? So it's not even just EVs, it's also electronics, like you're saying, and even potentially circuit boards. And so I think there's a lot of um, potential and it's and it's just interesting to think about like once you get it out of the ground you know we if we can keep it in India um, that will significantly re reduce our reliance relative to like let's say fossil fuels where we just constantly have to be importing them the CEO of one of the largest telecom towers operator in India is a friend of mine and he once told me that there's something like 800 gigawatt hours of lithium-ion batteries in cell phone towers so you don't need a big feedstock of electric vehicles in order to do this kind of refining and this kind of recycling in India.